A local water crisis in the U.S. state of Michigan has turned national, and it's raising new questions. Our water crisis and how it impacts countries, cities, communities all across the globe. Many of those communities right here in the United States. What if I told you that the air around us, yes, the very air we breathe, holds an unbelievable source of water? It sounds impossible, but MIT engineers have built a device that does exactly that, using nothing but sunlight and some clever science. Hang on, because this could be a game changer for the global water crisis. First, let's frame the problem. Right now, over 2 billion people worldwide do not have reliable clean water. Kids in some countries spend hours each day walking for a few buckets of water, and farmers watch their crops wither when rains don't come. Climate change is making droughts worse and summers longer. Reservoirs and rivers are getting perilously low. Imagine if your tap ran dry. It's a frightening thought. Even infrastructure fixes can struggle. Desalination plants can pull salt from seawater, but they require huge amounts of energy and money. Not practical in many places. So scientists asked, is there another way? Here's a wild science twist. The Earth's atmosphere actually holds an incredible amount of water vapor. Picture a clear sky. The atmosphere holds literally millions of billions of gallons of water in vapor form. Even the Sahara's air, with only around 20 to 30 percent humidity, contains far more moisture than you'd think. Normally, most of this moisture floats unused. But nature gave us a hint. Dew and fog. Think about morning dew on grass or fog on the coast. That's moisture from the air condensing on surfaces. Enter MIT's invention. Imagine a box roughly the size of a small refrigerator sitting on a roof. Inside, there's a special sponge-like material that can grab humidity from the air. In early prototypes, that material was a high-tech substance called a metal organic framework. MOF, basically a super sponge made of metal and carbon that has huge internal surface area. Here's how it works. At night, or in the cool early morning, the sponge inside the box collects moisture from the air. Think of it like a dry kitchen sponge placed in a steamy bathroom. Then, when the sun heats the black top of the box, the sponge warms up and the captured water turns into vapor. That vapor rises and hits a cool surface inside the box, where it condenses back into liquid water. Drip by drip, pure water flows down into a small collector tray. In those early experiments, just one kilogram of the sponge produced roughly two to three liters of water per day, even from air at only about 20% humidity. That's basically enough for one person's drinking water, all with no electricity at all, just passive heating by sunlight. It was like having a solar-powered water faucet that turns air into water. But the first sponge material was expensive, so the MIT team made key improvements. They swapped in a much cheaper material called zeolite, an abundant microporous mineral often used for filtering or odor control, and added a second stage to double the output. Picture two sponges back to back. The top one releases water when heated, and as that vapor condenses on a metal plate, it warms that plate. That heat then triggers the second sponge below to squeeze out even more moisture, all from the same sunlight energy. Let's put some numbers on this. In tests on an MIT rooftop, the new two-stage design produced water at roughly double the rate of the old design. They measured about 0.8 liters of water per square meter of collector per day. That means each small panel, one by one meter, gives nearly a liter of water daily. Enough for one person. And it gets even better. Future materials could be five times more productive turning one panel into several liters per day. This could change things on the ground. Imagine a remote village or refugee camp where one or two panels on each house provide the family's drinking water. 
No more walking miles for water, just sunlight and the air do the work. Even farms could use this. Panels could feed micro-irrigation for dry season planting. Hikers and soldiers could carry small versions to turn desert air into drinking water. And it's not just theory. The device runs itself with no extra power source, no battery or engine needed, just the sun. In fact, researchers tested a passive version of this technology in Death Valley, the driest place in North America, and it still produced about 160 milliliters of water per day from one panel. That's not a waterfall, but enough to quench a little thirst when nothing else is around. For the bigger picture, imagine every rooftop, greenhouse, or sun-exposed surface turning into a mini water plant. It won't instantly solve all water problems, but it gives us a brand new source by tapping into nature's reservoir. Remember, it's not making water from nothing. It's capturing what's already in the air. Think of it like adding thousands of tiny dew collectors across the world. In times of drought, these could act as emergency reserves, easing pressure on wells and reservoirs. For our generation, tech like this is a real beacon of hope. It's like something out of science fiction, a device that pulls water out of a desert breeze. Instead of fighting over shrinking rivers, people might one day have rooftop harvesters providing their needs. It shows that human creativity and science can literally give life to the driest places. Now let's talk about why this technology hits differently compared to anything we've seen before. For thousands of years, humans have chased water by digging deeper wells, building longer pipelines, and fighting over rivers. This system flips the entire story. Instead of chasing water across land, it brings water straight down from the sky. No borders, no pipes, no politics, just physics and sunlight working quietly every day. One of the most powerful things about this system is its independence. Most water technologies depend on electricity, fuel, or massive infrastructure. This one doesn't care if you're off-grid, in a desert, on an island, or in a disaster zone. As long as the sun rises and air exists, water can be collected. That makes it incredibly resilient in a world where power outages climate disasters and conflicts are becoming more common. Now imagine scaling this idea. One box gives water to one person. Ten boxes give water to a family. Hundreds of boxes could support a village. Thousands of panels across rooftops could quietly produce millions of liters every day without touching rivers, lakes, or underground aquifers. This isn't about replacing existing water systems overnight. It's about adding a new layer of security, a backup source that never dries up. Let's talk climate for a moment. Climate change doesn't just mean hotter weather. It means unpredictable rainfall. Some places flood, while others completely dry out. This technology thrives in exactly those unpredictable conditions. Even when rain disappears, Humidity remains. Warm air actually holds more moisture, which means hotter climates could make atmospheric water harvesting even more effective. Ironically, the same heat-driving droughts could power the solution. Think about cities of the future. Rooftops covered not just with solar panels for electricity, but also water harvesting panels. Buildings that don't just consume resources, but generate them. Emergency shelters deployed after earthquakes or hurricanes that instantly start producing clean drinking water without trucks, fuel, or plastic bottles. That's not a distant dream. It's a design choice. And here's where it gets really exciting for young innovators. This technology isn't finished. The materials can improve. Efficiency can increase. Designs can get smaller, cheaper, and smarter. Students, engineers, and creators around the world could build on this idea, customize it for different climates, and integrate it into homes, vehicles, 
and even backpacks. This is one of those technologies that invites creativity instead of limiting it. Now let's address the big question everyone asks. Can this really solve the global water crisis? The honest answer is this. No single technology will fix everything. But this one removes one of the biggest constraints humanity has ever faced. Location. When water no longer depends entirely on rivers, rainfall, or underground reserves, access becomes more democratic. Every place with air becomes a potential water source. This also changes how we think about conflict. Many future wars are predicted to be fought over water. But when water can be generated locally, dependence decreases. Communities become more self-reliant. Nations become less desperate. Stability increases. Peace isn't just about politics. Sometimes it's about engineering. There's also an environmental advantage most people don't think about. Pumping groundwater too fast causes land to sink. Diverting rivers damages ecosystems. Desalination dumps salt back into oceans. Atmospheric water harvesting avoids all of that. It borrows water temporarily from the air and returns it after use, keeping the natural cycle balanced. For the younger generation watching this, understand something important. This is what real innovation looks like. Not louder machines, not bigger factories, but smarter systems that work with nature instead of against it. The future won't belong to those who consume the most resources, but to those who learn how to harvest what's already around us. In conclusion, MIT's solar-powered harvester is a stunning example of turning a challenge into an opportunity. It catches humidity in its sponges, squeezes it with the sun, and delivers clean water where it's needed. Such inventions could help ensure we never truly run out of water, especially for drinking, even in the driest places. It proves that the future of water might literally be in the air around us. Stay curious, stay hydrated, and remember, science can find solutions in the most unexpected places.